Hello, my name is Frank Saratella. For those of you who are new to the channel, I am a miracle. I should be dead. In 2012, Jesus gave me a second chance in life when they had to close the expressways in Chicago to pull me out of my truck and rush me to a trauma center. In 1984 is when Jesus changed my life. If you'd like to read my testimony, click on the link below and you can read my testimony. It's on a midnightcry.com. On my website, I've got books that have been published that are on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, but all of my books you can read on my website for free, including this book right here. As you can see, hopefully you can see it. Um, this book has not gone to the publisher yet, but it is it is in its entirety on my website. It's just in the editing phases. Uh, so you may find, I think there's no contents. Uh, there's there's some, some flaws in it, but the, the content is there. So you can read it. It's really um, about how the church system has become the way it is right now. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'd like to return you. I'd like to thank you for returning. Uh, this is a, a video on where America is in Bible prophecy. Uh, this video was prompted because I had a, uh, a, uh, a dissertation with a young man, and he's bringing up eschatology and uh, dispensationalism, and I, I, the Lord really prompted me to do this. Um, you know, in Proverbs chapter 29, 18, it says, where there's, no not, where there's no revelation, the people perish or they die. Which also goes along with Hosea 4, 6, when the Lord says, My people perish, they die because of their lack of knowledge. Okay? And these are very important because we're going to, have, we're going to see the importance of revelation. When there's no revelation, people perish. It's very important. Okay? Jesus also tells us, Speaking to disciples, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. To everybody else, it's a mystery. If we are truly walking with Jesus as Christians, because Christians were called disciples of Jesus, were actually called Christians in Antioch, Acts chapter 11, then we should be receiving the mysteries of God. God should be opening up the Word. If we're not receiving the mysteries of God, and God is not giving us revelation, there's a problem. The problem is, is that we're not humble enough, and we are not going to know Jesus with pure motives. That being said, I'd like to ask some questions. What is the Bible? What is the Bible? Ask yourself, what is the Bible? The Bible is not a textbook. It is not a religious book. It is not a study book. The Bible, ladies and gentlemen, is Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. The Word of God is Jesus. And when we say that the Word of God, Jesus, the Bible, is Jesus and Jesus is the Bible, it means that the Word of God, the Bible, is the heart of God. Because when God redeemed man, He sent His heart, He sent His soul, He sent His very, he sent his very best to redeem man back home to Himself. Sending Jesus. Get that. Understand that. The Bible is the heart of God. Because God loves us so much, He gave us the written word so that we can understand who He is and what He requires of us. That being said, who is the Bible written to? Who is the Bible written for? And what is the Bible written about? When we answer these questions, you're going to see something come into play that's very different than what we've been taught in religious seminaries and religious settings, churches, ministries, whatever. The Bible is written about God's people. The Bible is written about how God is redeeming man back to himself. The very beginning when God created Adam and Eve, and then Adam and Eve were disobedient to the word of God, and God went through a process of redeeming him. Redeeming man. And then how God chose his own people. How God brought Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through events. And then picked his own people, Israel. And then when God did that, the word of God is about the history of Israel. God's chosen people. The apple of God's eye is Israel. So the word of God is about Israel. 
and it's to Israel. Why is it to Israel? We are Israel. If you read Romans chapter 2, you will see that Paul ends chapter 2, and he says that we, the Gentiles, are Jews inwardly, circumcised of the heart by the Spirit. So now, we, as Christians, are the Old Testament people of Israel. We are the engrafted Jew. Okay? Follow me. That being said, the Word of God cannot and will not be understood by people, by anybody, Christian or non-Christian, that is not humble to God. The Bible is a sealed book. Read Isaiah chapter 29. It's a sealed book. And unless we come humbly before God and ask God for His insight and His knowledge, the Word of God is sealed and nobody gets to understand it. And why do I say that? Because Jesus, in talking to the disciples, asked them, Who do men say that I am? And then when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus looked at Peter and said, Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church. I will build my church. What is the rock? If you're saying, Peter, you're wrong. The rock is revelation given by God. That's why Jesus said, flesh and blood. Man did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And when you read John chapter 1, you will see that there is a distinction that God touches people. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the problem. The problem is, is that people that have not been touched by God, people with ambition, people with pride, people that have... Uh, that are looking to be somebody. They're taking God's Word and twisting it. That's where theology comes in. You will not find theology in God's Word. Why? Because it's not. Theology, the definition of theology, is the study of the nature of God. That is not what God requires us to do. God does not want us to study His nature. God wants us to know Him, not study Him. You cannot find a child that studies his parents. They know their parents. They love their parents. They obey or disobey their parents. Then we come to eschatology. Eschatology is a part of theology, again, theology, concerned with the final events of history. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter was talking about the last days. See, what happens is when people are not getting revelation, they want to look important. They want to be somebody. They want people, they want the praises of man more than the praises of God. And so they start going into tangents and subjects, and they start specifying, well, I'm a, I'm a prophecy expert. You can't find me or you can't show me anywhere from Genesis to Revelation where there's a prophecy expert. You can find people that walked with God, people that God revealed things of prophetic nature to, God, of, of, to them. You can find people where God explained things to them, but there's no Bible prophecy experts. There's no eschatology experts. And then we come to dispensationalism. A religious interpretation, here we go, interpretive system for the Bible. When is there a system for the Bible? It's God's heart. A relationship is not systematic. A relationship is heart to heart. And you're wondering, well, where does this all come to, to American Bible prophecy? We're going to get to that. Just stay with me. It considers Bible history as divided into dispensations, defined persons or ages, to which God has allotted a distinctive administrative principle. This is all man-made, ladies and gentlemen. When you get humble before God, you can ask the Lord, Lord, how does the book of Kings relate to me today? How does the book of Chronicles relate to us today? And you will see the principles, the kings of the Old Testament, are just like the leadership of churches today. There's no difference. Churches have become kingdoms. King Hezekiah, you could correlate to Joel Olstein if you wanted. It's us getting humble before God so that God can reveal to us the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Then we have Calvinism, a major branch of Protestant that follows the theological traditions and forms of Christian practice set down by John Calvin and other Reformation era theologians. Ladies and gentlemen, none of this has to do with the relationship with Jesus. 
None of it. And people are going to hell because they want to be a Calvinist. They want to be an eschatologist. They want to do dispensationalism. You will not find any of that in God's Word because it's not in God's Word. It's man making up definitions to look important. Where is America in all this? When you study God's Word, you're going to find that God has two distinct people. God's people, the children of Israel, and everybody else. Everybody else, all the nations around them. And you will see that when the people of Israel are disobedient to God, God sends foreign nations against them. Where is America? Ah, where is America? Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, America is nowhere to be found in the Bible because it wasn't in the Bible. Now see, theologians and Bible prophecy experts will say, well, we believe that America is Babylon, and we believe this, and we believe Gog is... They believe it, but they've not been given revelation because it's not true. America is not in the Bible because the Bible is not about America. It's about God's people. And millions of Christians are going to hell because they want to think that they've got a, a, a corner on God. It's insanity. America does not represent Jesus. America does not represent Christianity. America is a country just like Greece, just like Italy, just like Iran. It's a country that is part of the world in which God set apart to use to be able to spread the gospel. That's all. Now, the difference is, is America's been given the freedom of religion, the freedom to be able to print 100 million Bibles every year, to be able to spread God's word, but America's not in the Bible because America's not in the Bible. God did not put America in the Bible for a reason. Because the Bible is about God's people. I want to get back to something. Paul addressed the dispensationalists, the theologians, all the religious confusion. And we're going to get to that, Babylon. When Paul addressed the people in Corinth and said, he says, why are you saying one is of one is of Apollos, one is Cephas, one of Christ, one of Paul? There's no confusion. There's no divide, no division, and theology, theology, eschatology, dispensationalism, Calvinism, all that garbage, man-made garbage, is splitting people. That's why you got 4,200 different denominations. That's why you got all these different churches, and that's why I say oh, America's here, America's there. This is a now, ladies and gentlemen, it has nothing to do with America because America is not in the Word of God. Now, people say America's Babylon. No, it's not, and I'm going to tell you why. If you read, and this is where we have to stay in God's Word so that God can teach us, Revelation chapter 17, verse 6. This talks about Babylon, and this is exactly why America's not Babylon. Why? Because it says in Babylon, the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs has been shed. Have you heard of any martyrs in America? Have you heard any anybody getting killed for the cause of Jesus in America? No, it's not. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to get to the Word of God. You need to study the Word of God, and you better get your hearts right with God because the vengeance that God is going to bring on the Christian community because we represent Jesus. America doesn't. America is going to get the aftermath of it because judgment begins in the house of God, and God is going to do things that are going to make people's ears tingle in the Christian community, in the hypocritical churches, in the hypocrites. That's why God is, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. A pure church, a, pure, a church of filled with love, not hypocrisy. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand and stop looking at Bible prophecy. Stop, stop looking at end-time events. They're all distractions to keep you from Jesus. And you're going to stand before Jesus. And what good is it if you say, well, I was a Calvinist, Lord, and I was an ecotologist, and I was this, and I do that. And if you don't have a pure heart of love. Ladies and gentlemen, the vengeance of an angry God is coming very soon on the Christian community and on America and the world. America is part of the world. The world is part of America, is, is, is embraced, is in America. Ladies and gentlemen, what God is going to do to America, because remember, where much is given, much is required. America has much more. America is going to be judged a lot worse than China because China is an atheistic government. America professes to be a religious, a Christian government. Figure that one out. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Now is the time to seek the Lord while he may be found. Ask the Lord to show you the secret sins in your heart. Ask the Lord to show you your idols. Ask the Lord where your weaknesses are so that you can be strengthened by God's word and overcome your sin. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. I beseech you, please, stop looking at end time events. Stop looking at eschatology. Stop the dispensationalism. Stop the Calvinism. And get to the Word of God. Be as a little child. It's important, 18, Matthew 18, 3 and 4, unless you become humble as a little child, you will not enter in the kingdom of heaven. All these people that are Calvinists and dispensationalists, they're going to die and go to hell because they weren't, chum, they weren't children, they weren't humble before God, and they didn't ask to know Jesus the way Jesus asks us to know Him. It's impossible to love Jesus too much, but you'll die and go to hell and regret every minute of wasting your time on not knowing Jesus for being complacent and being smug and arrogant. Thank you.